welcome to the Goggles Off Podcast. I'm Peter. I'm Colin. And I'm Julian. And yeah, welcome to our very first audio recording. We decided that it would be a good idea to put out some uh, extra content out there while we're editing more videos because, you know, I'm a lazy piece of ass word and I can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> well, videos take a long time yeah. and there's something to be said about actually diversifying your content. <laughs> What yeah. better way than to talk about retro uh, games and the culture that surrounds them without having to set up videos or anything like that? Yeah, easier on us at least. Again, we can't be asked. So yeah. I'm just a I'm just a homeless guy. They <laughs> they, pay me, they pay me twenty dollars to come in here and, and talk we, about video games. And and we have here our good friend Colin. Yeah, uh, known him for quite a long time. Uh, at the same time, he is correct. He is homeless right now, so we graciously invited yeah. him to come inside where it's warm before we boot him back onto the curb. Yeah, I, I would ask you to donate to him, but I really don't care. So. He's, he's got a Patreon page somewhere. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking about retro games, right? Uh, yes. So yeah. Let's get the ball rolling with some Angry Birds. No. Uh, <laughs> all right. You know what? Let's, oh. That's a good time to establish what we all personally consider to be a retro game. I know, Colin, you personally am not yeah. don't have the most experience with what most people would call retro, but even then, the term is nebulously yeah. defined. Well, uh, you could, well, you grew up the same time we did. Yeah, I mean, exactly. you know, we're all yeah. '90s kids. We're all born in the late '80s. Mm -hmm. um, we've all been around for certain um, paradigm shifts in the uh, in the gaming community. Yeah, man, remember in, the three in the industry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like as far as that goes, we all have a lot of stuff to add to it. That's true. So um, okay, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I guess. Um, looking at, I don't really look at things too much from the from the retro perspective. Um, for myself, most of the games that I got involved with, I mean, there's a little bit of SNES, uh, or sorry, just NES, a little bit of NES. Um, but I don't remember too much of that. All right. I mean, original um, Mario Brothers. Um, uh, I'm mostly familiar with the um, Super NES. So we're talking about things like um, some of the first games that I remember playing and completing. Uh, Donkey Kong Country, um, yeah. um, Super Mario uh, Brother, or Super Mario World Two, um, Yoshi's Island. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my one of my favorites. Um, now, did you own a Super Nintendo? Do you have one growing up, or was this like at a neighbor's house? No, or? no, I, we 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 had one. Um, we had also we had um uh we had the we had a Genesis. We had Dreamcast. Um. A couple of things. I never had anything like an Atari. Um, right, right. Yeah, but um, for for myself, uh, I don't know. I never really like looked at a thing uh, at a perspective of. I never had that sort of epiphany of like, you know, this is what I'm. This is my. I, I'm a gamer. It's just kind of like a a toy I had as a kid, right? So, right. No. Okay. Uh, no, like no huge catalyst that made you go, oh, this is the thing that I'm gonna do. Um. Well. Well. That I think that kind of comes. I think that kind of comes a little bit later for me. Right. Um. For me, it was more of the transition into PC gaming. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think it was like really dorky shit that I got involved with in the first. Uh. RuneScape is like one of those yeah. things that got oh, me. Oh man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like. How many hours? RuneScape's legit. If my friends have any. <laughs> original RuneScape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the original World of Warcraft, mind you. Once it by GF. When yeah. did that come out? Was that like ninety seven or ninety nine? Yeah, it's, I it's, don't. I don't know. You know I don't know the exact year, but it is uh, late nineties. Wow. RuneScape first released. Jesus. <laughs> because my friend in middle school played RuneScape to death. High uh -huh. school played RuneScape to death. Today mm -hmm. plays RuneScape to death. Yeah. It's it's. Kind it's, of it's it's pushing twenty years. Wow, it's yeah. it's ridiculous. It's it'll be like EverQuest at at at, yeah. at one point. So it's like a just zombie around MMO. Forever. Just yeah. never gonna go away. Yeah. Well, so, actually, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, I think for me, so I think for me, there's a there's a certain there's a distinct cutoff point. Like uh, when it comes to identifying as a gamer, um, or find that point when I figured out that I was a you know this was like my hobby. Yeah. Um, I didn't really have one of those moments. Uh. Until like I got into the PC gaming. See, see, when the when the PlayStation came out, I played some games on the uh, on the original PlayStation PS One. Uh, but then there, I think it's around that time there's sort of a change in the dialogue of what it was to become a gamer, and right, uh, people mm -hmm. started looking at it as making being like they started advertising it being like being a gamer was like a way of life, and it's kind of be like mm -hmm. the 
it's like the the image of like a kid with a backwards ball cap and he's rolling on a skateboard and he's like, you want to be a gamer and be cool? <laughs> I don't know. I think that yeah, happened think... in like the Nintendo Power Era. You, you yeah, see a lot of that. advertisements like that in that magazine. Yeah, it did, but there was uh, and there certainly was a point where. Uh, again, just, the paradigm like, shifted, and what's kind of cool to be a gamer rather than just being something you did. Right. People mm. suddenly were based on the left cells around it. And it, I mean, like, kids. It might have been really. just when I, as a like as I was growing up, I became aware of that. Yeah. That it sort of kind of, like, uh, turned me off a little bit to it. At first, I was just kind of like a thing that I did, and then you kind of get thrown into this bigger world uh, of things, mm. and then it gets kind of like weird if you don't kind of fit into the the way that they're showing the these kids on the on the commercials acting yeah it feels you gotta a little conform, bit of man what are you doing yeah it's... be like the guys on tv yeah. <laughs> oh, buy our product. yeah no kidding anybody remember nick arcade uh vague, that very, is a game vague. show where you know you see I see all the games on that, and kind of like that's where I'm coming from when I think of retro, oh, oh, like yeah. in the pre oh, yeah. oh, 3D that made games. So, that that show made me so pissed. Watch <laughs> oh man! Wait, yeah. it's wow, they're bringing back some memories here. No, it's <laughs> one of those things. <laughs> it's one of those things we watch. We watch these people playing games, and they're so fucking bad. And you just oh like, you yeah, you reach right. into the, the, the television and choke them. It's a, it's like watching your brother play video games. No, yeah. on TV. Yeah. yeah. Like, God damn it, hit the fucking button. Fuck. You just slap him. Yeah. Never mind, let me do it. Yeah. It's, yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. So, yeah. so I what? mean, what about what about one of you guys? Like, Well, like I was saying, I kind yeah. of think the PlayStation is like my cutoff point. It was like the beginning of the 3D era. Uh, and right. another thing I kind of bear in mind with that stuff is like the PlayStation was like the first – platform with like super broad appeal because it had like sports games and all your maddens yeah. and stuff right, like that yeah. and that was like cemented with the ps2 as well it's like sony like completely owned the market and nintendo and sega were like third and second place with their consoles in mm. opposite order i mean we all know sega's that we all know how successful the sega saturn was but mm. yeah <laughs> julian just did a dive bomb gesture yeah <laughs> yeah right. What about you, dude? What's your What do you consider? <laughs> um, well, I started with the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Um, first system I ever had. I was four at the time. Yeah. Oh, and sorry. I should point out. I I was n I didn't have a single console in my house until well into the two thousands. My parents were very much against it. Yeah. He he grew up with Max. <laughs> I feel did. sorry for him. Hey, Max. I had Max. I, I had many outstanding games. I had Lemmings. I had Mist. And. Uh, Nothing. Pretty much everything from Ambrosia Mind, Software. Minesweeper and Solitaire. Oh, wait. No, I didn't have that because oh. it was a total fucking waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> total time sinks for cubicle yeah, slaves. Yeah. Those, that's yeah. all those games are. His Thanks. Parents, his parents, for Christmas, they gave him a TI-85 calculator and let him play on it. <laughs> oh, it's like, I can make it say boobies! <laughs> wait, no. No, the calculators, they have that game. That game was like um pushing blocks around, right? Yeah. Oh, a oh, crate God, pusher or something? Yeah, I don't know. Pusher? Yeah. Yeah, we called it shitty Tetris because it was. <laughs> you can also put like Super Mario World on there if you're really good. Or no, sorry, Super Mario Land maybe. Yeah, I've I've seen it done. I can't remember which bullshit. game. Yeah, but yeah, um, but anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Um, yeah, like my first console was Super Nintendo. Uh, I got that when I was four. Mm -hmm. It's funny because my dad got it for himself under the guise of he was buying me a present. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is this is totally for Julian. Nudge, nudge. Not but, no, um, in my family, we say, call that a baseball man. Can I just say, that is that is the kind of parent that I'm going to be. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think there's a, I think that's kind of a cool thing, at least. Because um, my parents were never really... They never got involved in gaming at yeah. all. Like, I, I, as a kid, I wanted to try and just be like, I'll show you, Dad. I'll show you how to do this thing. She yeah. never wanted to get into it. My mom never wanted to get into it. Right. And uh, I, I want to look at it myself... In mm -hmm. ten years, if I have children, I want to be in that perspective of getting involved and trying to play the new games. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But the, the question is, by the time you get to that point, are the stuff we enjoy now going to be looked at as like the stick and hoop yeah. of our generation? Yeah. <laughs> and it, like, it's, it's a debate be for like... another time. I think that mm -hmm. on some level, it's already occurring. Yeah, I but suppose. We'll, Mobile we'll, gaming. We'll, Stupid we'll kids. strike this topic we'll, as to not make me completely depressed we'll yeah. right before the 10 minute mark. Uh, yeah. But, um. <laughs> so, about that new Pokemon game. <laughs> uh, that mobile ARG one. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, but, um. 
But um, aside from that, so like Super Nintendo's kind of been mine. Yeah. Um, cutoff point. It's it's like I can get into NES games pretty easily, mm-hmm. and even Atari games. But those, t- like when I play those, I'm just kind of thinking to myself, I'm playing a Super Nintendo game that's just significantly less advanced, and I'd rather just be doing that. And mm. it's it's just a feeling that I have a very hard time shaking. Like I've a lot of really weird biases with video games, and part of the fun of doing the show is that I get to confront those and actually try to have fun with it. But right. um, that's like always been kind of one of my hangups. It's like Super Nintendo. And some NES is like my absolute tipping point where I'm just like I'd rather just be playing something else. Yeah, as right. as far as the uh, the influential game to me that really made me go, this is what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually Star Fox for me um, that really convinced me that video games were the thing that I wanted to play huh. because I, I was huge in Star Wars at the time, and my dad got me Star Fox. You know, Star, Star Wars, Star, Star Fox. Fox. Yep. <laughs> That's how parents make those decisions, which is why, you know, naming titles are so important in, in marketing. But um, they got me Star Fox, and I was so blown away. Wow, it's Star Wars that I get to control. I get to be the fighter going around shooting things and, and going to space and asteroid belts <laughs> and enemy fleets and all this stuff. And Admiral and right Ackbar there, is a dog. <laughs> and, and, and right there, I was I was absolutely hooked. I've I've often said Doom was the thing that really got me into that, but Doom was more of a I want to make games thing. Once yeah. I really started like break Doom down and look over how each level was made and all that stuff, that was a catalyst for that. But in terms of getting me into video gaming, it w- it's always been Star Fox. Mm. Well, that makes sense in a way. You do talk about Doom an awful lot. I'll be honest. Here. I certainly do, but yeah. that's because I'm an admitted fanboy and I don't care. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. My, like I said earlier, my Catalyst game was probably Mist and basically yeah. the entirety of the Mist franchise, except for Ooh, which I only just recently played because that game was not released for Mac. <laughs> Maybe right. part of the problem because Mist was originally mainly a Mac game and it alienated a lot of its fan base that way. That's Which 4, right? Name. No, no, Uru was its own thing. Mist 4 oh, yeah. was Ubisoft only, and that's a zonist Ubisoft. list of issues. Weren't but, they, yeah. um, weren't they, aren't they, I mean, it's a little off topic, but yeah. didn't I hear something about a revival of Mist? Uh, um, that's yeah. like a spiritual successor. It's called Abduction, and it comes out this uh, year, and I couldn't be more psyched for it. Uh, Earlier reports yeah, are it's, it's awesome, and it includes VR tech. So, <laughs> five, yeah. how much? Uh, how much they? Mm-hmm. How much? Yeah, how much they <laughs> paying to uh, plug this? <laughs> um, let's hang on. Let me check my uh, pocket here. I've Every got, time he says the word abduction, uh, a man, uh-huh. man behind him hands him a twenty dollar bill. It's like the super troopers meow. Thing. He's employed by the <laughs> abduction internet defense force. <laughs> Listen, I got, I gotta tell you right now, abduction is a uh, meow. total meowing deal. All right. <laughs> No, no, I'm looking forward to it, but you know what? There's every chance that it'll underwhelm. But you know what? I don't care because I still got the old games. They're not going away, and Julian knows this too with the Star Fox series. So I, so I certainly do. That's right. So I can't pretend like you don't know how it feels. So, so I kind of realized something when I was, when you were talking earlier, Peter, when you were yeah. saying something along the lines of um, the 3D era. Yeah. It was kind of the cutoff for you. Yeah. I think a lot of the games that are classified as, like, retro-like yeah. today, mm. I mean, it's they're generally it's because they're the 2D games. Yeah. Um, and anything that's 3D, then it's not really, it's not, like, 3D retro-like that mm-hmm. often, right? So it's a kind of a classification of retro-like is kind of like the 2D, the 2D games where they have the, uh, the, the top-down, the roguelikes, platformers. Are Isometric, really et cetera, et cetera. I, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um... Do you think it's because that's what just people remember? Like, it's every that's the general, that's like the common conception. Of I think it. I think partially it's that. I think it has more to do with the mindset of the developers at the time. Because once three D started becoming popular, it literally opened up a whole new dimension uh, to be considered when making a game like that. Because you look at games. Like Bubsy 3D, and you realize Dude. that some of the developers didn't How quite. Don't. You look at Bubsy 3D, then you look so, away. Yeah. <laughs> that's what response you make. No, you, you look, look at, at Bubsy 3D, and your eyeballs burst into flames. All of this is true, but when you look at that, you realize that some of the developers hadn't quite grasped it. Yeah, and the, the other dimension. And, and you look at Crash soft. Bandicoot, and it's much the same way because, well, you can move slightly left to right in 3D. The camera is in a locked position. That's That's kind of the main thing, the ability to 
control your viewpoint because back in the 2D era, it was always fixed. Right. Or very rarely were you able to like switch your view or something like that. But then you have Super Mario 64, and suddenly you can look anywhere, yeah. and oh, jump six, anywhere. 64, and that, was game that was the game Yeah, shit, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that's kind of the thing. Maybe it has something to do with, you know, the whole being able to adjust your viewpoint. Maybe that was what really was the catalyst for changing the game industry or something. I think, I think as far as retro games go, though, yeah. to answer your question uh, about how people will perceive retro games as just these 2D things, yeah. I think it's because everybody at least in our age, has played a 2D game when they were a kid, and they kind of jump back to that when they think of retro games. So, so it's like, like, instinctively. So it's collect, so like, as a as a collective, the zeitgeist kind of uh, believes that retro is 2D, and anything yeah, that anyway. was 3D beyond is not retro. Uh, I, call, I wouldn't think, necessarily go that far, do you think but... That gener- generationally, that mm-hmm. there's going to be... Do you think that retro is going to maintain itself um, let's say in let's say thirty, forty years, the point where a lot of the the generation growing up um doesn't have that same experience with two D gaming, right? Do you think right. it's still retro will be a category of two D games? I think yes. the definition or, will widen. I mean, it's already kind of blurry, but I the, think there are like certain eras. The the main thing that I can point to yeah. is if if you don't mind making me an analogy, yeah. um, right now look at classic rock. And how classic rock, like every couple of years, start like expands a little mm-hmm. because really that's just a question of age. And as time moves forward, yeah, that that uh, threshold widens. Yeah, I think exactly. that we'll hit a division where like you get like the really retro games, like mm-hmm. you get the Ataris and the television. Then you have like the semi-retro games, like eighties, nineties, early two thousand stuff like that. And I think mm-hmm. from there, which is kind of like what already we have in place. But I think over time we'll just kind of construct more little brackets like that. Now, do you guys yeah. do you guys still play retro games? Well, you can. Oh, yes. Play, you can see the, uh, <laughs> the 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 giant wayback machine we've got here of all the crap we've yeah. got. I yeah, mean, we're kind of do we're kind of doing it for the show, but I still play them generally just for the well, just for fun people and might stuff not like know that. Yeah. that the show was a motivator for me to get these games playing in the first place. Oh, okay. Because, because I felt like, unless I had a goal I was working so, towards, so you got I always like a, find something else to so you're around like, with. Yeah. You're, so your 12-year-old self with a backlog, and now you're just finally getting to it? Yeah. Well, I know my 20, 12-year-old self has a freaking backlog, because until I, my grandpa died and literally left the NES, his NES and Super NES in his will, I didn't have a single console in my house. <laughs> Um, so, fun fact, my yeah. grandpa loved Nintendo before it was cool <laughs> for old people. So, are you Nintendo, saying... And so, therefore make it uncool. <laughs> so, I think if, like, if I look at some math... By Peter Blotrick. <laughs> <laughs> so, are, so what, you're, what you're trying to say is that mm-hmm. you're, you became a gamer when your grandfather died? Uh, no. It's, so, that's what I was able to start in collecting. To become, in order to become a gamer, you killed your grandfather? Yes. Is that what we're trying to say? <laughs> that, it's a very lead poisoning. Osmosis. <laughs> he fell on some lead bullets. <laughs> Whoa. No, I went to my neighbor's houses. My, my babysitter... I think Kurt Cobain died yeah. that way, too. Yeah, no, no be... my babysitter had uh, Super Nintendo and a Genesis, and my neighbor had, like, an N64 and a PlayStation. So there was no shortage of that kind of stuff when I went to my neighbor's houses. But yeah. where my house was concerned, not allowed. So, mm. yeah, that's basically how it was for me. <laughs> Any, anyway, Everybody skips this house when they walk past it. Yeah. That's the anti-video game house. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like I was wearing a yellow star everywhere I went. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, whoa, it was a Mario we're, star. Whoa, now it was a Mario now star. Now Holocaust. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, hey, the internet is full of those kind of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Not even I'm this bad with Holocaust <laughs> and Nazi stuff. Yeah. I'm just going to keep guys. on digging. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, all right. I think we've we, already crossed the threshold. Yeah, it's all going back. Yeah, new topic. <laughs> what else? <laughs> what else are we gonna talk about? Where's Your our favorite list? Nazi get <laughs> shit? Hold on, he got me. No, no, seriously. What were? What else are we gonna talk about? We well, kind of talked retro here. Well, we we're gonna. Well, um, one thing. Well, actually, no. That's a good segue into what you were discussing. What we've all dealt with parents who didn't, who just didn't understand. <laughs> if, if I'm gonna quote Will Smith here for a second. Um, video games mm-hmm. back in the nineties, um, they really had a stigma attached to them. Whether it was in school, you know, oh, he plays video <laughs> games all day, he must be lame. Yep. Through popular culture, all the video game player kids shot their school up. Um, w- what kind of bullshit no, did you guys and I <laughs> kind of have to put up with mm-hmm. as far as that as as far as that go? You already mentioned that your parents didn't even allow you in the first place. 
Well, I really had, again, I had no shortage in my neighboring houses, and I did have a number of fun games I could play on my home computers and stuff like that. Right. But, yeah, you know, I mean, my, my mother was basically like, unless he can learn from it, it's no good. It's not going in my house, you that never, old thing. You, you never try the alien invasion joke with them? No, that's what I call it there. Yeah, Bob, <laughs> when aliens invade the Earth, I'm going to need all the practice I could get. Now, that's what I call a close encounter. Another Will Smith quote. <laughs> but anyway. So I take it, that's no. No. Okay. No, I, I knew that wouldn't fly. <laughs> I tried with my dad. My it mother was work. raised a Catholic girl. <laughs> yeah. She has the image of the nun with the ruler burned into her memory. And she saw fit to inflict that on everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> cycle of violence. <laughs> exactly. I always had a cycle of violence. Yeah, but it you had four speed and I hit people. But you um, had a ton of <laughs> <laughs> you had a ton of stuff. You had a Super Nintendo with Dreamcast. Uh, what else? Oh. Uh, Oh, 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 I dealt with a ton of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like, my dad never minded me playing video games, mm -hmm. um, but he he always was trying to get me out of the house, which is one thing I appreciate. And not to sound like Mr., you know, I know better than today's kids, but, like, you know, I, I, I got to play football, I got to do karate, I got to do Boy Scouts, I got to do all that, you know, maybe stupid bullshit, mm -hmm. rather than just sitting in front, you know, with an iPad glued in my face all day. My dad's thing was just violence. Um, every time we rented a game from Blockbuster... And, you know, if we were good, this was every week. <laughs> Provided I, I wasn't fighting over my brother, figuring out what the hell we were going to rent. Because he had the worst taste in mankind. Like what? What do you always want to get? <laughs> Just stupid shit. Mm -hmm. Like, like he once rented the Blues Brothers 2000. Oh. Wait, that's a game? Yes. Oh. It was a game. It was oh. like the shittiest N64 game you can make. Okay, we're so, going to have to look that up one day. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> just, just like stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, my dad's thing was basically violence, and, and he hated the idea that I'd be playing any violent game in any form at, at all. Just like ever. If there was slapstick, he would get kind of like Julian. Do, do you need to <laughs> wow. be playing this? I remember it as a kid. get the Three Stooges game on NES. <laughs> I remember oh, watching logic. Angry Beavers. Yeah. And, and like the introduction sequence when they're kind of you know, like slap on each other. Yeah. I laughed and they said, Julian, that would join violence isn't funny. I'm like, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> beaver and, on beaver and, violence isn't funny. And then, and I, then he, I actually didn't say it like that, but I'm thinking I'm like, to what death. the fuck? <laughs> and then he murdered him in his sleep. Like, oh, Jesus. But no, like my thing was um, me, me being the little shit that I used to be. I, I would, I, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I would actually steal games from Walmart and I'd play them uh, instead. So I had like a couple more combats. Mm -hmm. uh, I bought Goldeneye, which I had convinced them to say, no, Dad, it's James Bond. You know, y you don't mind that. Uh, just a general disclaimer: we do not advocate uh, swiping games from Walmart unless you're really, really good at it. I advocate so. or, or unless you're 12 years old and they won't prosecute you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I was. But um, so look for loopholes, kids. I had Grand Theft Auto 3. I had I I had a bunch of stuff, mm. but <laughs> but like that was the main thing I I had to deal with on on my dad's side. It was just violence. Um, on my mom's side, she didn't mind. As long as me and my brother could play together. <laughs> oh. Which sucks because I would always kick his ass in games. Mm -hmm. I, I remember as a kid, I'm, I'm not even shooting you guys. I used to <laughs> whoop his ass so badly in Tekken 2. He starts crying, goes to mom, mom yells at me for for being good with Alex, the uh, the Raptor with the two boxing gloves in, in Tekken 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I had the opposite problem, Julia, but I didn't Mom cry. Said it's my turn to play. I just got oh, fed up and dude, left. Dude, dude, you better fucking believe it. That's why I. That's why I love playing Gauntlet Dark Legacy so much because mm -hmm. we all could play, and one would give me shit about nobody being able to come in. Yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe that kind of taints your rep. Maybe that has some of the reason you have such fond memories of that game because it was the one game your mom would actually let you play because you could play with your brother and you wouldn't run away crying like a little baby. Yes, that's true. <laughs> sorry, otherwise... sorry, Cameron, but it had to be said. Yeah. The truth has to come out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get his opinion later when he flies all the way up from uh, Florida in a couple of days to fight yeah. you or something. And then all I right. could just making uh, Boca Raton Seinfeld jokes at him. <laughs> Take the pen. Take the pen. <laughs> what about it you? Right upside down. What about you, Colin? Oh god, I, none, I, I got none. Of, I got none of that stuff. Seriously? Oh, come on, with I got with okay. you and your brothers and all, and, yeah. and your parents. Yeah. 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 So, so, I don't think that it's like, for I don't think it's like my parents were like exceptionally cool in that regard. That I think that uh, a lot of times they like they they got us games. They they hooked us up. We got systems. Yeah. Things you get for Christmas. You know. Right. Um. My parents didn't, weren't, weren't totally involved in it, 
they weren't trying to like push us in any sort of direction. Just they just uh, kind of considered it to be a toy. But yeah. I, uh, we never had any problems on that front. Uh, you never got any with pushback from violent games or anything like no, that. No, no, none of that. No, none of that. No, you see that by its absence is cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if my parents knew mm -hmm. about sort of like stigma about games or that you know violent video games make your kids violent blah blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um maybe they just instinctively knew better <laughs> i i'm not 100 percent sure i, I, I mean really good for your them, parents though but... your, your parents are one step ahead of mine if that's the case and, you know? <laughs> I, and i don't know exactly how you would recreate it but for us growing up as kids me with my four brothers uh we we didn't really fight over the games like I have a lot of fond memories of, um, for for example, for example, I I know almost the entire story of Final Fantasy VII. I have never played Final Fantasy VII. Right. I watched. You're watching. Okay. I watched Ian play the entire thing. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, and that's like it's like that for a lot of things. Like we have a lot of memories of different games that we play. Occasionally, you get a game that's got two player, and you, mm -hmm. so you play it. Yeah. Um, uh, but for the most part, yeah, there's no there's there's kind of experience about like. Sitting down together and watching and playing stuff and letting people take turns and so we never really had a thing where we fought over the games. Then again, mm -hmm. though, as a as a family, we didn't really play that many like competitive games. We didn't really get involved with fighting games. You pull, you do a lot of first, cooperative stuff. First thing, seems. yeah. First thing, uh, I mean, we do we do a lot of competitive stuff now. Um, yeah, that's but true. like, I think the first game, first competitive game that we had mm -hmm. was Marvel versus Capcom. Wow, well, the original. Yeah, Marvel was Capcom. We never did Street Fighter. We never did any of that stuff. Right. No, first one I had was like Smash Brothers because it had Nintendo characters in it. Mm -hmm. First one yeah. I had was Future Cop. <laughs> you know, I, maybe 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 original Smash Brothers season four might have been even before that. Um, yeah. I don't know where chronologically it was and when we had gotten it, but it's definitely one of those things. Mm. Was uh was Dreamcast before then sixty four? No, no, it was like Dreamcast was for like two thousand. Yeah, sixty four was like ninety six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then it was probably then it was probably Smash Brothers or something like that. Yeah. I mean, there's maybe some other some junky game that I don't remember about like yeah, some Shaquille O'Neal fighter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I just so happy you appeared. You actually Ooh. owned that. I owned what? What are you talking about? Shaq Fu. I don't know Shaq Fu. Well, we put it over your house. We did. Yeah. Oh, I think my I think that was my brother's copy. Um, oh, okay. Well, why do you own that? Which I was shocked. Well, my brother has a tradition of collecting shitty games for the sake of collecting shitty yeah, games. Shitty movies. Like he'll have he'll have Barney's count by number. Or hey, friggin' hey, cross the line. Bar Barney's yeah. count by number. That's a good fucking game. <laughs> yeah, you go from one to two and then three. <laughs> oh my god! Fucking mind blowing. Mm -hmm. No, part of the reason was he was a member of a fraternity. Uh, when he went to college, and it was a super nerdy fraternity, and one of their, like, pledge rituals was to have them beat shitty games. <laughs> I, I, I'm not I, even I thought you were, I thought you were going to say beat each other off. Oh, yeah. Like a real fraternity. Yeah, well, that too. <laughs> I'm sorry, William, I have to come forward with this information that's, that's, now. You went to video game college, you guess the shitty watered-down fraternities. Oh, video game? Did you see? You ever <laughs> seen that show, Video Game College? Yeah, I, I saw, like it. Oh, yeah, my God. I just watched... Oh my god! So so I gotta tell you about this show. Um, so I watched the I first a t-shirt, first two episodes, and it's like it's jammed, packed with all the fucking the the the, the memeiest mm -hmm. video game and like this misunderstood video game thing. So it's like the yeah. the entire premise of the show is like um games are commonplace and everybody's a gamer. They have talk shows and they have their the hottest gamer will come on and be like, well, obviously yeah, that's I'm a the stretch. Gamer. I get the highest kill score mm -hmm. and then they play some. This is uh, bleach. Yes, yeah. continue. <laughs> uh, 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 Julian, Julian, where are you going? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's ha oh, yeah. he's hanging himself. He's tired of the news, and he's no, it's just like uh, I don't mean to slam concepts because I've always been a guy who says concepts. Concepts can be stupid, but it's actually huge that matters. That sounds like the worst so fucking idea I've ever heard. It, it is like don't the knock cheesiest. Until you've seen it. Yeah. It's he makes the a... cheesiest shit I've ever seen, and it is so. Mm -hmm. I, I, you make it sound like it's Big Bang Theory. It, at the very least, it's not. No, no, no. Big right? Bang. Okay, big. Okay, so Big Bang Theory. When I when you watch Big Bang Theory, I want to yeah. like, uh, I want to like stick my head in a pool full of electric eels. And it just, just it just makes me want to leave the room. I mean, that's easier. Yeah. <laughs> it just made me no. Like I've actually watched it with with some of my family members before. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will say, mm. being ten years old and watching The Evil Dead. With my mom's boyfriend, was more comfortable for me 
than than, than watching The Big Bang Theory. More comfortable? <laughs> yes. What do you mean by more comfortable? Bazinga. I don't get the comparison. It, there. It, no, it was it was that goddamn awkward watch. Oh. Every person, because like you know, like you have to understand, like this is like my family. They don't they don't get gaming like I do. They don't get nerd culture. Did like you have I do. to? That was their idea of what people like me did in my did spare you, time. Did you uh, did you ever have to have that conversation? Uh, somebody ever asked you on the lines of like. Oh, you like Big Bang Theory, right? You're a gamer. You're a nerd. Oh, yeah. Plenty of times. <laughs> and you, have to, you have to sit there and you have to explain, like, no. This, you <laughs> fucking, fucking insulting noise. me. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I try to explain it, but, like, I have a, a, I have a very good friend, um, and she once said, oh, you're just like Sheldon. And I wanted to just get in the car and drive off from she's, her She's house. affectionately calling you an autist. Basically, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So like, wow, Julian, you really are an autistic retard who only talks about video games. Well, why? Why? Yes, that's a very good compliment. Thank you. But um, I, I just I love that uh, I love I that line no from the here. from the from the it crowd with, with the Dungeons and Dragons episode. Yeah. Where it goes, uh, just Dungeons and Dragons. Is that a sex thing? Far from it, Jen. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Now, where far do you from ra- it in many uh, ways. Now, where do you rate the IT crowd on that scale? Uh, IT crowd is uh, it's it's I mean, a uh, different different aspect, right? A different aspect, but uh, yeah, there's still that better, kind of better catch all. Uh, there's, there's points where it's a little bit like misses the mark, but mm-hmm. you know, it's it's a little it's more it's far more true. Um, it's more British, certainly. <laughs> But back to game, video game university. <laughs> no, so okay. back to video game university. <laughs> back to hell. Back to, so literally, like yeah. I'm, I'm watching this thing. I'm like, I'm gripping the edges of the seat. I'm waiting in anticipation. I see it coming. I, I know exactly what joke they're about to make, and then they fucking make the joke, totally shamelessly. Um, it's just the Poor cringiest. Way. It's the cringiest shit you'll ever mm-hmm. watch, but it's hilarious, cringy. Okay. Right? Was it a portal joke? Uh, no, there's like a million. There's like all kinds of stuff. Oh, okay. Now, how many episodes have you seen? Because I've only seen like the first two, two here. Two, yeah. Oh, all right. I've watched only two. I guess I've gotten a different reaction out of it. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate it yet. <laughs> like the kid, the kid gets a, Listen, the kid. Don't judge until you see it. I'm gonna put my foot down. Can I, now, can I, can right? I give you, you a quick, got no right to? Can I give you a quick synopsis it? of the plot? Mm-hmm. I, am I am I ruining your podcast? Am I ruining? <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessarily. Uh, it's a free form so here, thing, but you know. So here's synopsis. I'm just gonna of the segue plot. to my so, next point. So yeah. they got this. They, there's a talk show. It's got the world's best gamer on it, and then there's a then the protagonist. Yeah, he's playing game. on a random, like basically like a random pounds. Call of Duty server, right? Yeah. The guy, kid goes AFK, um, and then the 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 big bad guy, the best gamer in the world, um, is doing a bunch of showboating stuff. Like he puts a grenade on the kid's head. He's like idle, so the kid's just standing there. Yeah. So he's, so trying the some, like, he's trying to do some like fence funny dancing stuff and do some trick shooting, like pew pew pew, and trying yeah. to shoot the grenade off the guy's head, right? Right. Um, and then the guy comes back from being a- AFK. He does some. Tr- he like throws a grenade, shoots it, and then all yeah. of a sudden, the entire gaming world is up is like riding this guy's dick. Um, he gets, <laughs> it immediately gets an invitation to to game university. Where yeah. It's some sort of fictitious board. world where you beat this popular guy, you immediately enroll in this competitive gaming university. You're, so and you and then you don't have any friends there, and then you bring uh, black trench coats to school and kill everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got the... This is my high score. <laughs> so, Stop so, with your Matrix <laughs> fantasies. <laughs> so, it, it, as much as like you, you, you joke about that, but that's kind of like the way the school works. Mm-hmm. Every kid in the school has a ranking. So every kid in the school has a ranking, and you have to beat other kids to go up and down the ranks. So like the the kids will challenge each other to like game the Call of Duty style games in order to in the in the, in the first I think the first episode or the yeah. second episode he basically the kid. A big nerdy guy, or a big jock guy. <laughs> big jock nerd. Yeah, yeah. Big, a big jock nerd. Yes, it's, it's a silly sound. He like okay, uh, alpha male. Yeah. He alpha he beta. Basically, challenges the guy to to uh, to a one on one uh, their Call of Duty rip off game thing. Right. I can't. And, I uh, the, he loses and he gets strike. expelled. And then good because the kid because the 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 world's coolest new gamer right oh he's the very last of the list of a school of 500 people he's 500 out of 500 if he makes one wrong move he's expelled it's like every it's the cheesiest shit but it's so perfect. To be honest, it sounds an awful lot like any given like high school anime kind oh, of a I thing. Watched it, but... I watched it with my girlfriend. She hated it. She she mm. she was begging me to turn it off. <laughs> that maybe and. And you left it on? Mm-hmm. Massive it is. issue. Yeah. Oh, she turned it off. I turned it back on again. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa. Slow the fuck down. All right. Oh, too, 
too intense. <laughs> well, whatever. You know well, what? I'm gonna school, watch. It's like, yeah. it's like you guys ever have to deal with that stuff in school too? Like you know, people judging you because you play video games, or people thought you screw shoot the school up. May, or, or or is no, that last part really. just me? No, no. Okay, not at er, all. everybody thought that would be on me. But no. Never uh, when I was when I was picked on schools for other stuff, um, yeah, people like pushing the tall guys buttons. That was that was their reason for harassing me mainly. Uh, but yeah, whatever. No, I, now, like, I got picked on in middle school because, you know, me and my Harry Potter haircut and my big circular glasses didn't... It was, it was the antithesis of cool, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> then they learned not to I bully did. me. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, like, I was, I was the fucking uncoolest person in that entire school, man. Huh. By far and large. Mm-hmm. And then they learned not to screw with me because then I just started responding violently. Uh... <laughs> like, like, I remember one time... Kid was picking on me for uh, for some dumb reason. And, you killed and, his and, parents. And I took a pencil and started just stabbing him with it. And then uh, they had him drag me away. And Dad took the video games away. And I was so very upset. I, I was very upset about that. Little uh, dude living up to a stereotype. <laughs> oh, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> Ten years later, <laughs> I Julian finished up. the job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Don't <Jeez. laughs> No, Julian no, doesn't let things. Actually, he doesn't yeah. let those things. Uh, he doesn't. Any repeat offenses. Yeah. yeah. And, but. <laughs> But no, like that actually tied back into um, you know, because I remember in 1999, uh, when everything changed, uh, for school, suddenly you know like you couldn't bring Nerf guns and squirt guns to class anymore. You couldn't go outside the building for breaks. At least that's what I had to deal with. Mm-hmm. And suddenly the kids who dress all in black, listen to death metal, and play video games all day. Everyone wanted to be their friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everyone. Yeah. Uh, I never really noticed. I was always, uh, I wasn't really the guy being mocked. Uh, more often, I was the guy being ignored. Right. Just, just like you know, we're you're not even worth it. Yeah, you're thing. not even worth getting put in a locker. Yeah, in, exactly. In, well, I wouldn't. In some fit, ways, so. that's arguably yeah. better. Yeah. In its own way, as as fucked up as that sounds. Mm-hmm. But um, no, do like like, I everybody thought I'd be like the next fucking Eric Harris and just. <laughs> bring an M16 to school at some point. And, uh, and like, I was even fine with going to high school. High school was great. But, um... Well, this podcast where... really blew really fast here, so... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, like, that was the point where, like, I started learning, okay, if I want to talk all day about video games, I need to diversify my portfolio a little, a little bit. Yeah, fair enough. You know, but, that's actually yeah. not a bad segue here. <laughs> there was something else we were, had in mind to talk about, which was, yeah. if there was any genres that any of us just have not... We cannot bring ourselves to either play or enjoy, or if you just can't, like, break through the wall kind of a thing. Uh, yeah. Mm. You know, that's kind of a good question, mm-hmm. because I think I get into every genre somewhat equally. Um, it's like there's certain genres that I love more than others, but as long as the experience is good, I don't really care what genre a game is. I do know that with some, game, with some games, my ability to play them is so bad I don't play them. But that's more of a I'm mechanically unskilled rather than I don't like it. So My big culprit with that is actually real-time strategy games. Like, I love Command & Conquer and I love StarCraft, yeah. but I suck so damn bad at it. It's well, it's a lot it, of people. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But, like, if I was going to sit down with StarCraft, I could play StarCraft for four straight hours and just mm-hmm. not get bored because it's so damn fun. But, um... Anything, anything that's good uh, to me is good. I, I, I've been getting into sports games, the much, the uh, much maligned video game uh, culture. So where would I've adventure games fall in that? Would that fall within the what category? Kind of, what kind of adventure are you talking about? You talk about like Lucas like Arts or Miss? We're talking about the old fashioned po- point and click point kind and of click. stuff. Oh, the inventory Lucky, masters, as Lucky I call them. Islands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Well, Those are pretty fun. fun. I, yeah, uh, I, I never played Monkey Island when it. First came out. I only came. I, I played it like a year or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's fun. Because uh, for for those, I mean, just trying to figure. They they have the they they carry the stereotype where you're just trying to figure out what the creator wanted you to use this stuff yeah. with, right? Oh but, yeah, inventory, but just, mashing stuff together. Puzzles. But I think I think um I think that the I think it's evolved since then. Um, where you find in games like Telltale Games, Walking Dead is like the new evolution of that. I mean, realistically, the story is gonna. They don't try to force you through these weird, complex puzzles anymore, and they just they know that the game is about the story, and they're just trying to guide you through it. And yeah. they make they have you make choices, right, so that your games your your experience is 
it feels like you're making an impact, even though realistically in walking, I mean, you'll get to the same. <laughs> Your choices matter. They have that. What, what, mm-hmm. what do they call that? It's like when you start at one point and then you can go any direction, which always end up the last point too. Open ended, oh, yeah, non linear. I believe it's, it's like it's, that. It's a fork, but if yeah. it's going to lead to the same destination, there's no point. But walk but, left, walk yeah. right. Well, and that's I call sh- that non linear then, because Mega Man's like that. You can choose any level to start with, but it all ends with Doctor Wily there. Yeah, 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 but that is on you. No, it isn't. It's non-linear. Yeah, it's linear is like Super Mario Brothers, where it's level one, level two, level three. But you can skip the levels by taking certain pipes. Yeah, yeah that's true. Like but otherwise, it's higher level. Yeah, so I get, I get you. I get you. You're right. Yeah, you can't um, backtrack. I mean, in a way, there's yes. a little bit of linearness involved in it, um, mm-hmm. but it's for the most part, it's non-linear. I mean, because the thing is, like, especially one of the key things of Mega Man. I mean, we're gonna get way off topic here. Gonna, gonna no, this past, is that's but, the whole point. <laughs> yeah. But one of the 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 big things about Mega Man is that um you're the, the order in which you do things drastically changes the gameplay experience, right? Yeah. You you get the you beat the fire level, you get the fire weapon, it beats the ice the ice level, right? And yeah, so, exactly. So it, it's very much like there there is technically, I think, a always a optimal way to beat those those games, yeah, right? Preferred, yeah, right. Absolutely, but it's you go possible. down the you go down the line, right? Get you, Metal Blade. Yeah. When? Yeah, Metal yeah. Blade. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just Mega Man goes on the shed, gets a big rusty metal blade and starts throwing mm-hmm. it at his enemies. Whoa, what the fuck are you doing yeah. that? I mean, if you're so hardcore that you want to beat uh, Windman without whatever weapon Windman is it, like weak to, yeah, then more sucks. power to you. But, you know, it, yeah, for, the option's there, I suppose, is the point. For for all of us that don't w- want to waste four hours of our time, we yeah. can pick another route and not suffer through it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, so, so if I answer the question for me... Uh, yeah. Uh, nothing. Nothing is really entirely off topic, but generally, I try to steer clear of um, traditional fighting games. Um, mm-hmm. I I'll go into occasionally. I mean, I play Marvel's Capcom. I like it. Um, yeah. But it's just kind of like for me, unless you're playing online, which it's not really that fun for me. Um, it, it just like I feel like it's just the same thing. It's just trying to master some like one character and then beat the other person's character it's not that not a lot of replay value that feels fulfilling for me yeah. um generally i mean i play smash brothers but even that's like to an extent but smash isn't a fighting game colin i, I, oh, I enjoy my shots fired i, I enjoy it more <laughs> for the party for the party element um yeah, i agree but there is but I, yeah because healthy competition is cool i like the i like i like, I like competitive games mm-hmm. um so sports games generally i will not jump for a sports game like ever, um, how about you know, NBA Jam and like NFL no, Blitz? No, no not, not even that. that. No, wow, I don't care about any of those. Um, just not interesting to me. Mm. Uh, and then uh, RTS uh, is something that's very for any game that's like Civ like. Oh, like really, strategy. I, I like strategy games, uh, mm-hmm. but something about those games where it's like a very long term, drawn out thing just feels like. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'm the kind of person who'd rather get a filling experience and not spend, like, four hours doing it, you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, you'll talk about, because, like, if you, like, you go through an entire game of Civ, and yeah. then you talk about your experience at the end of it, and then you're like, well, that's four hours. May, uh, meanwhile, you can play some other game, have a fun thing, and then get it over with in, like, 30 minutes. Yeah, I guess there's something to be said for that. I mean, I suppose, but like mm-hmm. games like Civilization, you have to understand have a ton of depth with them. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot is, of depth. It's a thrill there's... like fighting against so many AI opponents or you know human opponents and trying to win. Same thing with like Total War. It's like Total War's fun to me because it's me against the goddamn world, and and occasionally human opponents. Yeah, and then you got games four like... hours or not. I mean, it's still you know. If, if if you have fun, it's not a bad return on time. Yeah, and then you got games like Alpha Centauri, where it has the cool sci-fi elements that yeah, keep definitely. you hooked. The really high concept kind of stuff, if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but, but like, I do know. agree with what you're saying, though. Like, like at some point, though, it is a ridiculous time sink. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> oh god, I've got I, don't I don't see the return investment on it for for myself. For yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, I th- keep in mind that um, this is like. Generaliz- generalization and there are exceptions to the rule. Um, oh, a lot well, of the times, of course, yeah. and, 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 a, and a game like that, you have to. If you get a friend that gets you involved in it, it makes the experience much better. I mean, try to pick up a game like this on your own. Like, uh, it's. I think it's fairly hard. I mean, for the most part, I feel like the people. I feel like a lot of people who play StarCraft either got involved in it earlier 
or they're what a friend or a friend got them involved into it and taught them how to play. Yeah. I mean, when I, I I played StarCraft a little bit and it was because a friend got me to play. Yeah. And I got I played Warcraft a little bit and I play with friends. We have like mm-hmm. little land stuff in basements and everything's better with humans basically. I mean, you right. can do your AI opponents all day, but nothing will beat actually having someone next to you or even online. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what what about you, Peter, in genres? Uh, well, I mean, I am much the same as you. I enjoy real time strategy, but I certainly can't take it to a actual human opponent level. I have done yeah. stuff in the past with things I'd call. So what you're saying is that you're not smarter than any other human being. What I'm saying is I don't have the patience to get my clicking finger to like crazy caffeine levels of uh, vibrating. <laughs> but yeah. no, yeah. so. No, basically, I I play games where it's like other action elements to the real time strategy games, like the multiplayer version of Future Cop and Ares, mm-hmm. and I actually enjoyed Brutal Legends multiplayer an awful lot. The main game itself, I admit, is a little weak, and the campaign was like really meager. But I love the humor of it, and I really like the the fact that you can control an avatar and leap into battle at the same time. Yeah. I like that concept. I feel like if you brought it to PC, there's a chance it might work better. I mean, consoles and real-time strategy, let's be honest, they really have never been able to mix those two. No, they they haven't. No. Actually, it was funny. The first time I ever played Command & Conquer was on the N64. Right. When they had, like, like everything had the 3D graphics at on the, the time. I was blown away yeah. by it. That's a thing. Yes. Yeah, StarCraft 2. Star- yes, StarCraft was ported in 64. Mm-hmm. Well, how good was it? <laughs> Not very. <laughs> there you go, see? Well, basically, as far as I understand, because I've actually played the... Um, I've never actually played the N64 StarCraft. For what I understand, it's a direct port of the PC game. Right. Imagine how difficult the PC game can get. <sighs> On yeah. an N64 controller, and then you kind of have the problem with StarCraft on a controller. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I'll just go my hotkeys. Oh. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> as, for other, as for other genres, I mean, perhaps it's because I just didn't grow up with them and didn't have much exposure. Because I didn't really grow up with shows like uh, Dragon Ball or Pokemon or anything like that. I've never really you, enjoyed... You, Charlotte. J- JRPGs. No, I have not. I don't like... I don't like the endless dialogue boxes. I don't really like the fact that combat all takes place within this sort of time shifted area where everybody lines up and everybody takes it in turn to do some number number crunching. I prefer I prefer doing action RPG stuff like yeah. your Zelda or, Yeah man, all that button mashing sure is deep. No. Yeah. I think I just gotta get you I just gotta mm-hmm. get you in on some of those games. I, I got some recommendations I like stuff for, show. I like story. I love games with great stories, but I also like brevity. And if there's one thing and anime and uh, JRPGs are so hard to for. say. Just wants to, just, just mm-hmm. wants to drop. Just wants to drop the word anime. Yeah, I want to say oh. the one thing Japan is known for is their lack of editors. They're all basically killed off. Yeah, they don't <laughs> exist anymore. At the beginning no. of the 1970s, before video oh. games were a thing, they all vanished into <laughs> <Yep>. thin air. <laughs> We're all putting no, internment peace. camps as no. a no peace. Actually, whoa, <laughs> whoa, no, peace actually embraces. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, like the thing is though, it's like. If you like story, though, you should like JRPGs because not only are you going to get a lot of story, the text boxes are the best way to deliver that story. I'm sorry, but voice protagonists in games is like the shittiest story decision made in the last 10 years because it restricts what you can do. Uh, With recording lines, Mm -hmm. those lines are now fixed. And instead of going back and editing them like you can in a text-based game, you you basically have to live with it. And it's going to suck up your budget. It's sucking up the time. It's like you have the file space too, so you have less space for more important stuff. D- text boxes, yeah, I can see like why they're a little monotonous, but really, there's a reason why they last so long, and, and why the old school RPGs on Steam all have them. It's not monotony; it's, it's brevity. No, that's the thing. That's the difference. It, the thing is, I'd say one's cause the other. Mm-hmm. There's no, something. No, so, there's a difference. I, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I totally disagree. Though I can, I, I understand kind of where you're coming from. Um, if you look at it from a development perspective, um, that's what I think. I feel like there's um, I know you haven't gotten to this yet, mm-hmm. um, so no spoilers really. But um, in terms of Fallout Four, that's one of the criticisms that people had yeah. about now the protagonist is voiced, mm-hmm. and so they feel like it. Um, a lot of the lot um, the, the 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 writing for the game got a lot worse. 
And somebody's it questions whether it's because of the voice lines or uh, if there's the writing was just poor and the voice lines are just su- uh, suffering from that, right? As like a mm-hmm. as a side effect. Yeah. But um, I there's a lot of experiences in games that cannot exist with just text boxes. Mm-hmm. And after a certain point, text boxes are just like it's they're, they're they're just they're archaic yeah. um sometimes it's good because like like a book if you're reading a book it allows you to read it make up your own voice right. you can kind of set the scene in a certain way but at the same time it would be like trying to say you know why would we put sound in the game because it you know it would you just have us come up with our own sort of sounds, right? And you have to have this whole sound budget, and then the sound budget is long. For me, I feel well, like the difference. Between... I don't agree though, because it, because we all need to know what your game's going to sound like. Everybody knows what words are. So, so when it's a text box, we kind of invent those own voices for ourselves. When it comes to sound design, like you have to have sound effects. Otherwise, why not? Just written, why not written sound effects like? Thump or boom, and when let people fill in the gaps what they sound if, like, right? Well, like, if, you yeah, play, says, if you play 13 right, on the GameCube, you literally do get that. I'm just mm-hmm. saying. No, the difference is with a book, you have somebody say something, and then after the quotes, it'll say, he said sarcastically, or he said uh, in a panicked voice, or he said in a muted tone. Mm-hmm. In, I mean, if you put that in a text box in a game, that just seems a little dumb. Yeah, I mean, if you have well, you played, have you played have Bastion? Mm-hmm. Have you played Bastion? I have not. No. Or Transistor? I have played Bastion. Try to I know play, exactly what you're. Try talking to about. imagine those games. If you if you play it, just, just watch a playthrough of it, yeah. mm-hmm. and then try to imagine that game without any of the narration involved. Mm-hmm. And immediately, the experience is incredibly cheapened. I mean, of course, I, the, the I, writing I think is. We're arguing with voiceover though. Mm-hmm. No, we're just generally arguing voices versus text. Yeah, I mean, as far as voiceovers, I mean, like, Fallout has Ron Perlman. Mm-hmm. And, and, the beginning. And, and for the Fallout it's, intro, that's the best way to set music, it. I, so I, music, I, I do agree. Music sets tone, mm-hmm. and yeah. voices on character sets tone as well. Like, yeah, that's true. They're, they're, they're both tools. Mm-hmm. And it can create an incredibly powerful moving experience by having a character say, speak a line, right? right. For instance, if you have an action movie, and then deliver that final one-liner, like, hasta la vista, baby, right? Oh, boy. Some, <laughs> some, some sort of liner, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't have that spoken, if it's not heard, if it's not kind of, like, brought together in a full product, it's not as powerful. Mm-hmm. If you just read, if you just read a, a, someone say in text, hasta la vista, baby, it's not really as powerful as just, like, the emphasis that's put on through spoken word, right? Mm-hmm. Uh... Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's true. I don't know. I mean, like, there's, there's been plenty of games that did vo- uh, that did voices and text boxes just fine, which I think is kind of a happy balance. I mean, you look at a Planescape Torment, which is considered one of the best stories in, in a video game ever, mm-hmm. and that's like 99% text. It, it certainly didn't lose anything to me oh, without, yeah. without having voices or, or without hearing fucking Troy Baker or Nolan North Okay, but getting uh, back voicing to Fallout, characters. there were some in Fallout... Like you said, there were some characters who were voiced, but other characters it was just text. Yes. Would you say the characters who had voices were better than the ones who did not? Well, well, the ones that were voices were talking heads, and the right. talking heads were always more memorable because then you get into the facial conversation with them, and mm-hmm. and in some of the best dialogue scenes, like in two with the drill sergeant. Okay. <laughs> but um, hmm. it, it's hard to argue which one's better because. I think at you, least as a concept, because the talking heads inherently have more dialogue and more things to do, because mm-hmm. there's certain capstone NPCs, whereas the text guys are just text guys. But the, but they still give you the option. It, it's like every, it's not like every single town has everyone voiced, and as a result, you only get one town in the entire game because mm-hmm. the sound files take up space. Uh, up. I yeah. would I would bet you I would bet you a hundred dollars that if Oops. you got proper voice acting for a game like Planescape Torment. And then they voiced the entire game, and right. the the massive endeavor in which that would be, um, painful and lengthy and cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, right? um, it would improve the game. It would make mm. the game more powerful. Yeah, but that's always the if. If you got right. proper voice actors, if you yeah. spent the requisite amount most of time, of, most to of the time, them. It's, most of the time, it's it's really it's like. Mm-hmm. Um, you're always gonna have the text there too. It's yeah. like it's it's a binary thing. Is there is there someone voicing the lines or not? Yeah. 
because of course you have the opposite of the of the spectrum for like Capcom games like mm-hmm. uh, Resident Evil and House of the Dead and stuff like that. Like, right. Stuff for like G did. I, I feel like I can like, get behind. How is this happening? I can well, get. I can well, that's just get... crappy translated dialogue. It's like Final Fantasy has a huge problem with that, mm-hmm. where everyone says, "Oh, the stories are really great. They're awesome." And past ten, I think they changed translators or, or something happened, and now every actual voiced dialogue in Final Fantasy is just the most cringeworthy, awful, stilted bullshit you can imagine. But you know. Certainly his voice to get the deeper experience out of it. Mm-hmm. it I'm not just, sure. I don't know, like, watching a playthrough of 13 and listening to such I gems like, like, this is a bad birthday, as the birthday celebration goes haywire, it, it made me just want to close it. I'm like, this is awful. <laughs> but it was a this bad like, birthday. High, th- but he was right. This is like... But it wasn't a good birthday. High school level Doesn't dialogue. Mean, oh, and I mean, people are paid good, for this. He's probably had good birthdays, and that wasn't one of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like Nothing's you should take off points for him just stating the obvious. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. So, call, no, you should. Do you think, <laughs> Julian, yeah, sure. Julian, are you making more of an argument along the lines of protagonist mm-hmm. or in general? Because I can get a little bit more behind the argument that a protagonist, the silent protagonist, gives you a little bit more freedom and self-insert yeah. and immersion. But That's true. So uh, I could be a little bit more behind your whole argument about I the... Would, the I, I would strongly argue that, yes. Um, you, If we're going to use Fallout, you can look at like New Vegas versus 4, uh, mm-hmm. for an example for that. But um, I actually, I actually really, besides besides the writing quality in 4, mind you, uh, I find that the, the voice adds a really cool element. Um, mm-hmm. Just the write, choose the writing quality and the quality of the, the mm-hmm. uh, all the written lines. It's just like, in general, worse than it has been in the past. Mm-hmm. Having played a couple of these now. But yeah. that's just... I feel like it's a. I feel like it, the the voice can work. It's just they just had poor execution. Yeah. Now, with regard to like silent protagonists, is it more immersive when you're actually playing someone who has a past experience in the world, but you are this person, like any one of the Fallout games, or like uh, I, I, I feel like well, I think or it's... is it more like a the old school silent protagonist, where you don't have. Uh, a name or face, and the fact that you don't have either one of those things is never properly addressed. Everyone well, just addresses you as, oh, hey, you, come over here and do the thing, or something. And the thing is, you have to consider, though, with with that, both options are easy to fuck up. Yeah. And, um, well, you can even make the complete sign protagonist has yeah. always been clunky, uh, in, in, in its own way. One thing is, all these bug the crap out of me in Half-Life, is the fact that, doc, like, Dr. Gordon Freeman is exactly. this, uh, uh, this amazingly smart guy, mm-hmm. does all this cool stuff, and he can't talk. And in the most, and at most, what he does scientifically is push buttons and pull levers yeah, and, and stuff like that. That's and, about and it. And sort of power cord into a wall. And, and scientifically <laughs> yeah. blow people to pieces. Yeah. Well, but it, like, on the other hand, though, this whole thing of... I don't know. I'm, I, I'm kind of having a hard time describing it. I think like, the best <laughs> way now for actually discussing this is that a mix of things should be the ideal. And I think, like, with the protagonist, yeah. you gain a lot more leeway in actually making him silent, or at least unvoiced. But, okay, so, um, so one of the reasons why... So, so one of the reasons why they, they leave the characters unvoiced is because, um, you know, it's the self-insert thing, but mm-hmm. oftentimes when they have a character that's unvoiced, they tend to leave a lot of the character's history and backstory out of the equation, too. You see that right. in... You see that... We're talking about Fallout. You see that in Fallout. You see that yeah. a lot of the... I mean, like, um, unvoiced... Um, protagonists, they often have like mysterious backgrounds and stuff like that because yeah. Yeah. if you are trying to become the main character of the game and put yourself in that person's mindset, they often want you to fill in the blanks in, in a lot of aspects. They actually, um, in all, all of the all of the Bethesda games and like Skyrim and stuff like that, we're talking about my girlfriend, she she has she creates like head canon, right? She'll come with a story for her character that fills in the blanks that the story leaves untold. Right, yeah. and that kind of makes the flavor of the character because you know right, in yeah. those games you can make your character's face, you can um, make decisions for the character and have different dialogue lines. If you want to be an asshole, you can be an asshole. If you want to be a good good guy, you, you can be a good yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, well, then you have games like so. Yeah. Then you have other games like Amnesia, where you are the protagonist, but the protagonist has amnesia, and you're constantly learning things, relearning so, things so I think about it's your kind past. Of a, I think it's just kind of a tool where if they want to tell it a 
they already have certain things figured out for the character, or rather, they have most of it figured out, and they want you to just experience it. Yeah. They they'll they'll make sure that they, like the character's voice, they'll do stuff like that, and then if they yeah. if they want you to kind of figure everything out on your own, decide what what you want for the character, they'll they'll do that. Yeah. There's a lot of, for instance, a lot of mystery, a lot of fan theories about Shell and Portal. She never speaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. She's just kind of vague. They make some. There, there's references in the in the game. You could try and figure out those out where it fits into your perspective of what happened in the game. Yeah, they but, leave enough. They leave enough stuff for yeah. you to fill in. And I think that generally it's a pattern. So if you have a silent protagonist, mm -hmm. then there's generally an air of mystery about them. Oh, I mean, yeah. I would just comes... argue that's. I would just argue like that's the fun part, though. Like making yep. up like that little stuff about yourself. I'm or but, or, but or, there, or about the are, character. There are there are games that shatter that uh, shatter that sort of like idea as being like superior. For example, which have Telltale Games Walking Dead. The your characters, you make a choice. The character says a line, and it can be a very very powerful experience for a lot of people. I mean, there's a game Life is Strange. People are uh, playing. Um, some people really enjoy. It. Um, yeah. And it's, it's similar thing, right? Characters they have, they they speak their lines, and it creates a different, more cinematic experience. I guess the, the point people. is, if you're gonna stick to one way of doing your protagonist, do it correctly, because otherwise just, people are just left confused. I think there are enough examples out there. Should we have the cheap cop out and say do it well? Yeah. Right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, go do ahead. it well. <laughs> Anything yeah. works, just do it well. Don't screw it up. And if we don't I mean, like it, then you screw it up. Video yeah. game developers follow our incredibly big guidelines, and you will yeah, make money. It's, it's, not, it's not hard. We That's why listening to the fans is always such a shit idea. <laughs> we don't need to figure out what we want. It's yeah. your job. Exactly. Except <laughs> listen to us constantly because we know what's best. Except we don't. Especially if it's on Twitter. You yes. should definitely listen to us on Twitter. Oh, absolutely. Listen to our all cap tweets. <laughs> I'm tweeting. I'm tweeting. I'm tweeting. And yeah. threats to rape and kill you. Yeah. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. I mean, those Unsubscribe. Look at the... <laughs> Unsubscribe. <laughs> you have to listen to me. I'm a subscriber. I will thumbs down you. I have power. Yeah. <laughs> I am one out of a hundred thousand. My opinion matters. Oh, God. Petition. I'm petitioning Shut your up. game. Okay. Yeah. Petition.org. So, all right. You know what? Actually, you know what? I thought of a question a while back that I think I can post to the best of the group here. What's the... What's the first like, or what's the what's the first or the best laugh out loud moment you had with a video game? Whether whether the game was intentionally funny or you were playing against somebody else and you pulled off something so ridiculous that neither of you could believe it. <laughs> with a retro game, it yeah. would be be probably just be beating Sonic Three Knuckles in one sitting. Was that a laugh out loud moment though? No, but like that's uh, the sort of thing that I couldn't believe I actually did. Oh, sort of looking out like at the very last boss, stupid Metal Sonic and all that stupid crap. I'm like, oh wow, I actually did this. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. In a mommy friend's house, we're all kind of like you know having a great time, um, and all that fun stuff. Me and my friends actually later beat Gunstar Heroes on Expert. That was a major. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, we actually did it. Uh, yeah, type of new, uh, type of deal. You know, new question. What's your most what's your most fondest memory? Of like beating a game, I think that's better, a, oh like cross accomplishment type of thing. Yeah, beating Rainbow Six when I was thirteen. Right, yeah. which is a feat that people my age even today can't wrap their heads around doing. Mm. Seriously, I, nuts. I get is like another like really annoyed rant here. But like I've I've seen so many people utterly fuck up with Rainbow Six and just like not get how it works. And, and like I'm so confused. This is so hard. Pity me. And I'm like <laughs> I beat this when I was thirteen. Yeah. It's not even that bad if you get the mechanical aspect of it down. Mm -hmm. But the fact that like, I could do that at that age, legitimately, no cheats, none of that, any of that stupid BS, that's a fun memory to me. Yeah, yeah, that's always the key see, thing, no cheats. I beat, yeah. uh, I beat 60, Mars Morrow 64 with five and a half A presses. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. What? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I like how many parallel I, universes I'm, did you jump to? <laughs> you can't see me, but I'm rolling my eyes here. <laughs> oh man, we have to show you that video after. It's, it's seriously not to get off, off topic here. It is the most amazing fucking Mario 64 video you will ever watch, and I don't mean that sarcastically in the slightest. Yeah, yeah as soon as so so it, it it's not really like a speed run of 64. It's rather an optimization of it's like a it's like a theory crafted optimization on how how to solve an entire star with the least number of button presses. And, like, that's 
That's it, right? That's Imagine the, that button presses like, are oh, a resource. Oh no, it doesn't. It doesn't I look at those videos. I think of the time that right, people did but, to. But think oh, about it, right? It's like five, oh, it's like oh, the, the oh, minimal amount of button presses, right? Mm -hmm. Now, realistically, realistically, it doesn't sound that complicated, right? You know, just you just count them, then place them, you jump, figure it out, right? But yeah, but shit, this, it doesn't sound complicated. <laughs> but but the thing is, there's a point in the video. There's a point in the video where the guy says. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, I have to explain, explain to you what parallel universes are. Once you get to that point in the video, <laughs> your mind is fucking blown, right? This guy is jumping to parallel universes in the game. He's talking about advanced mechanics, about how yeah. your your speed can, um, continues to go above the maximum things if you, like, walk backwards into diagonal slopes. And Basically, just, Peter, you, you, you know pod racing? Yeah. This is pod racing. Oh, shut up, Anakin. This is the pod <laughs> racing of Mario. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is yes. where we go deeper. Yeah, we have to go We have to go deeper. Yeah. Well, well, Pete, like... Yeah, that kind well, of stuff does amaze me. Well, that, in that case, what's that what's your good, way. um, uh, being a game Is that really your... Is that what you're throwing in there, Colin? You got... Oh, I, actually, I don't have fun playing games. Uh, <laughs> I, well, Colin doesn't play to... games. He just shit posts about them. Oh. I just, yeah. Well, what about, like, I just playing... Mean, Awesome knots with your brothers and like shit oh, like oh, that. We just, we just scream at each other and just. And, well, for the oh, purpose okay. of the podcast, it probably should be a retro game we're talking about. I theater, suppose that's but, like, true. Game, no, I, I don't, don't really, necessarily mean it was retro like, game. You Anything. know, game you grew up playing it and, and you think yourself today, wow, how the hell did I do that? Or people today can't do that w without help of you know anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, there's not too many of the games that I think in hindsight were that complicated to be able to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I did some pretty complex Chow Garden stuff. Sonic Adventure Battle. Oh, all right. <laughs> you and me both, some, my friend. We're about some hidden, you and me some both. Hidden shit. Um, Go ahead, Legend elaborate. Of, uh, <laughs> there's actually, I mean, Legend of, uh, Legend of Man, the, the game, uh, I don't know if you, any anybody knows about this. Um, I was talking about this last weekend. I'm familiar with Legend of Man. So basically, it's a, P, it's a PS1 game and the game has so much, in, so much depth in its systems to the to this day, people still haven't completely figured out exactly how things work. They have a crafting system. They have um, where you can you can craft weapons, you can craft um, instruments, you can um, craft golems, you can raise and tame pets. You can there's like a whole whole gigantic. Was um, it the original Minecraft? <laughs> Was it the original crafter? <laughs> uh, no, probably not. But also, one more thing, I sorry, I hate to interrupt, but wasn't there also like some sort of mana game on the Super Nintendo? Yeah, you're thinking of there's the there's yeah, secret, secret of mana. secret. Of oh, mana. they're all part of the series. I think it's like okay. I think it's like Suikoden Densetsu. I think it's uh, <laughs> something like that. Okay. Um, Doki Doki Panic, etc. Yeah, I apologize to all mm -hmm. of my uh, my our weeb listeners. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so there's. Th you have to do some extremely complex maneuver, like you have to get specific uh, specific items in certain amounts, and you have to forge them in certain ways. And the order is in super important, um, right. because yeah, it changes everything, and it changes like elements on your weapons you craft. So I ended up crafting like a super powerful weapon in that, and it took me like a really long time to get the items for it. Right, um, right. I guess that's kind of like a secretly. One of those uh, my my most autistic moments as a kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, like what about stuff like Pokemon? I mean, like you ever get Mewtwo or anything like that that made you go, "Wow, I did!" Oh, it. actually, um, I did. Uh, I mean, you're the Pokemon fan here. Exactly. It wasn't. It wasn't so much like it wasn't so much as like a, "Oh my god, I did it!" Mm -hmm. But um, I used to do um, I used to do competitive breeding before they had like um, the special tools to make op automate things. So in Pokemon, you can like. Pokemon have different stats, and they right. can be. There's a certain threshold, and they can be maximized. Some Pokemon are perfect. Some Pokemon are imperfect. Okay. Um, <laughs> very rare that you have a per totally perfect Pokemon, mm -hmm. but you can actually breed Pokemon, um, which is when you put them in the daycare, you ride around, and make an egg, Classic. and they and the the baby will have it'll inherit traits from its parents. Mm -hmm. So if you do things in particular ways, the better parents you have, the more likelihood that your baby becomes perfect, etc. So I, I I had a couple. Um, Screw you, fully, Darwin. Learn traits are inherited. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to go through the odds of the stuff, but like yeah. I have like I bred I have a perfectly flawless Melotic with hidden power grass. Um, perfectly flawless, mm -hmm. um, modest Roserade shiny that I did using the Matsuda method. 
uh, basically. Okay. Uh, I don't want to go over. I don't yeah, want to go over yeah, crap. No yeah, we're not going to. But those there's, those people who know know what you're talking about, yeah. and everyone there's else like, can stay like happily. One guy, there's like one guy. He's like, I know, oh, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, sure. Well, what about you, Peter? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I'm gonna be talking about Mist again, but I managed to beat both you, Mist and yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt. I was going to say you beat Mist and Revan. That's true. Without that's a, a strategy, that's a guy. fucking accomplishment you in did, and of itself. People, it's not so much beat. It's you didn't quit this. <laughs> yeah, you that's didn't true. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the real one. Yeah, like well, it, 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 it. compared to a schlub like me who can't even get past the first area of Mist without going, Peter. What the hell do I do? Well, I think this ties back to our like bond experiences earlier. We were talking about, but something about Mist really clicked with me. Right. Yeah. It had a, like a depth of story. I mean, the the creators were heavily influenced by Tolkien and uh, C.S. Lewis. They wanted to make a a story that's a smaller part of a larger world. And even right. back at the first game, you could tell that's exactly what they were thinking. Yeah. And it was even expanded on ribbon. And yes, I will say I did beat both the first two games without resorting to a strategy guide. I think maybe the third game as well. The rest I don't really care if I did because they're not as good. But yeah. I did have help from my brother. It was kind of like we were two halves of one mind, like a Jaeger style Pacific Rim reference. But no, he was he was all about I the numbers. Alcohol reference. Mm-hmm. The guy getting- yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, <basically. laughs> Take take a shot every yeah, time you run to a line. lever run into a lever something. puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is with Mist, it had like it didn't have very many humans, but it had backstory for all the places you saw. It had stuff you could infer just from the visuals itself. I mean it didn't treat its audience like they were a bunch of idiots. Like they had to spell out everything. Right. You could you could tell this huge backstory, they and then you can infer stuff like from idiots. the. They idiots. They idiots. They always become an idiot on their own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you did not just go there. Mm-hmm. You have to like backtrack the areas and like look at books and then like write down like see the the reading notes. is I'm, hard. I'm so sorry, Colin. I'm so sorry. If that was a deal breaker. Yeah, for you. yeah, Colin. Colin, you actually have to read it and, and not have no one north tell it to you. Mm-hmm. Wow, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's not so just... voiceover when you read the book. It's not just running around and humping the walls like Doom or but Quake or something. That's a fan level gameplay, my friend. Don't, uh-huh. don't talk about things you don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is that Miss needed a tutorial to tell me how to play it. Well, excuse <laughs> me, princess. <laughs> yeah. Only a game in which the only actions are move and click on things is somehow too hard for the Colin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I really I like that. I can only do one at a time. I did. There was another experience I... <laughs> I'm really fond of, and that was actually when I was playing Halo 3 multiplayer, <laughs> where I joined a match, and immediately my three teammates dropped, and it was 4v1, <laughs> and amazingly, I beat them. And they weren't scrubs either. They actually had some good stats on them, they but were the thing probably was... probably scrubs. Yeah. It's, no, no, it's like, wow, you beat a bunch of 12-year-olds in a, uh, <laughs> in a track run. No, good for you. Wait, was, this, was it was it like uh, was it like both. one life only, or was it like a total score thing? It was a total score thing, but the thing is, initially they really had a beat on me. Yeah. <laughs> but then I started getting a little more creative. It was that one level with the giant uh, spin and pinwheel. There, what was that called? I don't remember. I don't uh, know. I just uh, know yeah. that you can do some funky stuff with landing warthogs on them and dropping them on people. <laughs> yeah, well, well that's certainly not what I did. I, for the first time in my entire life, was actually good. With a friggin' sniper rifle. I managed to... It was like, I was, you know, that feeling. You were in the zone. Because you know, I had rage on my side. For I mean, one thing, I was raging at my yeah. supposed teammates for dropping out immediately. And I was raging on my opponents for making me look like a friggin' chump. And I'm like, alright, that is it! <laughs> and... I managed to get a couple shots. Some were lucky. Some were actually lined up and timed perfectly. And there were seconds left in the match. It was tied. They had seven kills. I had seven kills. And the very last shot, I no-scoped while jumping <laughs> downward. And I hit the guy. But did you but did you spend yeah, Halo like, three sure is a retro game. No. <laughs> yeah. I did, I thought I established we weren't just talking about retro games, we we're talking about great gaming moments. 
It's all right. Uh, oh, no, whatever. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, being the game well, doesn't count. You have yeah. to have fun as a kid. <laughs> Your fun's all like illegitimate. Yeah, you know? oh, great. But um, but I'm well, still a kid on the inside. <laughs> That's weird. No, you're a child. I'm not mature. <laughs> no, you're a child on the inside. That's yeah. different. It's like a little kid inside your body, mm-hmm. piloting you like a mech. No, I no, I ate him. Well, oh no, that's your nervous that's system. I'm a cannibal. Yeah, <laughs> but um, someone's, if someone's happy. Some well, fetish as, is being met right now. Mm-hmm. Well, as as someone um as someone who who has been missed um uh, be missing ribbon. Yeah, you ever get like a sense of like, very perverse pride out of seeing people get frustrated with it and just give up and think to yourself, I'm better than that guy at that. Not particularly. Yeah. I just really? wish they'd give it a second try. Yeah, I just wish. Do you ever do you ever watch? Do you ever see people play it and then do something way faster, way easier than you, and you're like, well, I'm so fucking dead? Uh, yeah, sometimes. I've, 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 I've gotten with that. I used to watch GoldenEye speedruns, and I thought I was good at getting the cheats. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Yeah. People are stupid good yeah. at that game. Like, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark. Uh, it's 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 kind of fun to do that with, like, all those old childhood games you've been playing where you sink a lot of time into it. And then you watch people who do that stuff, like, as a living yeah. for, like, donations and Twitch streams, and they... They're acing it in so many ways that I never even would have thought of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, that doesn't bother it me because like... there's always going to be someone better, no matter what you're talking about. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm good at what I'm good at, and uh, if I yeah. want to get better at it, I'll it, try. <laughs> it's it, it's it, it's probably just a thing of me, but yeah, like, with Rainbow Six, with with D- with Doom, with Quake, mm-hmm. it's like just see just see people like you know get annoyed with it. This is clearly mm-hmm. archaic game design. It doesn't fit. I can't mm-hmm. beat this level. I'm like. I did that when I was seven. Maybe yeah. you should get good. <laughs> yeah, get good, scrub. Yeah. Was, was there Except the most else? smug tone Or hire a, hire a middle schooler. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I won't do all your work for it. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about? Or... No, I think, I think I've think i actually pretty much wrapped up what I want to say, at yeah. least for an introductory. So, I think we bored everyone to tears who decided to listen to this, so... <laughs> I think that was about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're trying. For get those of you who are time. still conscious and alive, uh, thanks for listening. So... so so what's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the what's the what's the what's the takeaway from this? So what's the takeaway? Peter's mm. Peter's a racist. Yeah, that's is correct. A school shooter. That's right. I've got shit opinions. You're, that that you're is correct. You're a you're an otaku boring. dweeb. Basically, basically, if this is a sitcom, <laughs> I'm a gaijin. Yeah, exactly. Basically, if this is the sitcom, mm-hmm. you're the most boring straight man on the face of the earth. <laughs> Peter's the Kramer who will just burst in, do dumb mm-hmm. shit, then leave. Yeah. Which is a very accurate description of how he is with me. Oh, uh, Julian, I need to borrow your couch cushions, by the way. <laughs> and, no and, reason. And I'm a psychotic who probably should not be given unrestricted access to firearms. Julian, yeah, despite, you're the Newman. <laughs> despite my love of weapons. Yeah. I feel like you're more of the, the character who shows up in a scene as like an off-bit character. And it's really funny um, for that one scene. But then they're trying <laughs> to bring it back in future episodes and then it really just – it's just – it ruins the joke. Yeah, it just yeah. got old really fast. I feel like you know, that's, that's a good point, enough. Julian. You're fired. <laughs> you're Colin, new co-host. <laughs> oh God, no. are you kidding? That'd be the best way for this thing to suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guy who plays retro games versus guy who didn't play retro games. Let's have about retro games. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'll go very far. Yeah, <laughs> huh. nah, just kidding. We love having you here, but. <laughs> 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 So, Colin, just you just make me remember just... all those good times you had playing the original Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Crickets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ocarina? Oh, man, Ocarina. <laughs> no, no, what he should have done says that to me, because I've never Dude. played a Zelda at life. Well, yeah, you too, but... <laughs> Which makes me a freak with my <laughs> Nintendo fandom, but yeah, that's... we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, but, no, no, those are takeaways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Peter's a Nazi, you're boring, I'm psychotic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great group dynamic. Take your, take your pick, audience. <laughs> all, all we need is the black guy and the girl in here, and then we'll really get diversified. Oh, boy. If oh, I'm not the way they want. Wow, wow. <laughs> Terrific. This, this podcast is sponsored by black.com. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is that, should I know what that is, or am I happy no, or ignorant? Sure. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Oh, Peter. Yeah. Uh, uh, our, our, my ignorance is pervasive. You're so nice. beautiful, beautiful little boy. Yep. Our innocent little child. <laughs> oh, God. Baby boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Baby, Baby boy. boy Peter. I can't Baby wait boy. for the next Sonic game, guys. That's going to be great. Are you kidding? Uh, remember That's Sonic it. Adventure 2? <laughs> let's not. Let's not end the podcast. This, let's let's actually let's actually end the podcast and not start talking about Sonic. Okay. <laughs> you guys make fun of me, but Sonic actually is one of the topics I do want to cover a podcast for. No, we will. I'm just, sure. Just this big group therapy session where we all sit down mm-hmm. and wonder why. 
Well, you Why know did what? it happen? Let's I throw actually kind of like some of the happen. new Sonics, Julian. Shut up. <laughs> all right. You know what? Let's throw that out to our audience. If you want us all to talk about Sonic next, or if you want us to talk about some other topic, uh, let's just uh, throw this out there. The I'll suggest thing. Sonic. Colin, what do you want to talk about next? Uh, we're, we're, we're playing a little too far ahead. I'm just throwing that out memes. there for the sake of yeah. Up the meme count. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> memes per minute. It's time to access the world meme database <laughs> for inspiration. <laughs> I'm in. Mean, uh, I hacked the world meme database. Yeah. All right, but no, um, uh, I backtraced yeah. the URL. Closing comments, anyone? Uh, well, I uh, thank everyone for tuning in, and uh, next double time thank we'll you have for, something more interesting to talk about. Double thank you for staying. Yeah, exactly. For even here, we're not just pantomiming to an empty room. We're talking to one. There's like one guy. <laughs> yeah, there's like, there's like one guy, and he's like, he's, "Hey, you know, so you, hey, he can talk over." Hey, himself. guy. Hey, guy. Mm-hmm. You're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You're yes, you really are. handsome, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're the yeah. best guy. Or girl. Let's not, let's not be sexist here, even though I am a Nazi. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure all I the girls... I think we're just being realistic sexist. here. I'm pretty sure all the sexist girls left the podcast as soon as you started talking to me. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she had to, yeah. She, uh, it's because she had to leave the room and uh, go do something. <laughs> because yeah. she was just so tired. Yeah. Take, take, yeah. A, take a shit because... Yeah. <laughs> Vomit uncontrollably. Hey, yeah, go to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. Where are we going with this? Yeah. Uh, all right. Terrible, which which we all knew, but it had to be restated. Okay. Well, I guess I guess that's enough for now. What what are we at, time code-wise? Uh, oh, okay. Well, that's not as that's bad as I thought. That's a wrap!